Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Meredith. I'm one of your FOF educators and I'm so excited to be here with you today to go over all things applique. We're gonna do a little bit of embroidery applique and a little bit of sewing applique. There's lots of different types of applique, so I just wanna go through them and explain some things, some processes with them to hopefully get you a little bit more comfortable um, doing them and wanting to do them more. But we're gonna give everybody a second just to come on in and sit down and find us here. And um, if you have any questions, shout out to the team in the background, Ryan and Amy. I know um, some of y'all got to meet Ryan last month. Um, he was on one of our Who's Sworn Viking Facebook Live. So hopefully y'all got to see him. He's not normally front and center. So welcome, Ryan and Amy, for helping me out today. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to send them to them and they will send them over to me. If we don't know the answer to it, we will figure out that answer for you and come back and answer that later. This live is recorded, so if you do have to leave, you can always come back and watch it here on Facebook or on YouTube as well. We have it streaming live on YouTube also at the same time. So um, if there's not any questions, we're gonna go ahead and get going. We are gonna start with just basic normal embroidery applique. So that looks like this. So clean satin lines applique. There's a couple different colors I have in here and then it did stitching over it. This is a built-in design. All of the designs that I'm using today are built into the FOF Creative Icon 2. So you can do all of these, practice all of these yourself. I'm gonna show you on the machine also where you can find the different types of applique and the step-by-step -step for how to do them. So we're gonna get going. We're gonna, again, start with just basic normal applique. Um, this is where I started, and I think this is the, the easiest way to, to start your embroidery applique journey. So I'm going to switch over to this camera here and we're going to start here. I'm going to show you where you're going to be able to find these directions for doing um, different types of applique. So if you click on the little book with the tab, like the little bookmark tab right there, the closed book versus the open book, and you go over to embroidery techniques, we're going to go to applique embroidery and you're going to find four different versions right here. Actually, let me, I thought I was being prepared by having everything ready to go. Let me back out here because it won't let me look at those different types of things in the step-by-step -step when I'm in embroidery mode. So let's switch that there. So if I come back up to my closed book here, now all of these are highlighted bright so that I can see them. We're going to start with the applique covered edge, which is like a satin stitch edge right there. Um, I'm just going to say yes. I'll open it back up in a second. But if you go to applique covered edge, you're going to find your instructions and then right beside that, you're going to find content. And this is where you're going to find all of the designs that come directly on your machine that can do normal satin edge, covered edge applique. So this is where they're all going to be. There's the little hummingbird that I did there. The ice cream cone that I'm going to show you today is actually from the MySonet software. It's one of the super designs in the software. So that's the only one that's not on the machine. But I wanted to have two steps with that to show you. And there's some other things within there I wanted to mention. So if we go back to instructions, it's going to tell you what a covered edge applique is. And if we hit the arrow over, it's going to give you your list of materials, how to prepare your machine, put your embroidery arm on, have your, um, your embroidery foot on. And then it's going to give you all of the instructions for setting up right here. So we, that's basically what I'm going to show you today are the step-by-step -step instructions for setting up a normal covered edge, satin edge applique. So I'm going to close that out, come back over here to my files, and I want this one right here. I saved a couple different types of applique so that we can, I'm only hooping once, and I'm using the 240 by 150 hoop right here, the regular one, not the metal one. And I want to center those, so I'm going to get my palette up here, select multiple, or select all right there. Select all. I'm going too fast for it. Hold on. Let me let it load. There it goes. Why are we not? What am I doing? Okay. There we go. Okay, so we're going to hit go right here. And we're going to leave all of this the same. And it's going to, I'm going to bring my other camera over here for you. I'm going to hook my embroidery arm, my embroidery hoop on. I have just tearaway stabilizer in um, my hoop along with fabric. So the first step, normally with a um, 
with an applique, if you pull it into the software, it's going to have a placement stitch color. Can you change the satin stitch to, to another stitch? I will, let me come back to that here in just a second. So normally with a design, at least with the designs in the machine, it's gonna give you different steps and you're gonna have different color changes. Let me move this out of my face, so sorry y'all. Um, you're gonna have different color changes. So you're gonna first have your placement stitch, your tack down stitch, your, and then your satin stitch. So it's basically three different color changes. But with the applique designs that are in the software, it's gonna be all one color, but there are built-in stops. So you're gonna see, and I'm gonna show you on the screen, that's why I wanted to bring in the ice cream cone versus something on the machine, so that you could see, there's only two colors for the ice cream cone. There's the cone and the actual ice cream, but there's different stops built into each of those. So that's where I think people sometimes get confused and lost. And what's really helpful is to hit the, the, um, the icon, Amy, what is the icon called where you can actually play it? The, the stitch out preview, I think is what it is, where you can actually play the stitch out and see, and it will pop up with, hey, this is when you're going to put your applique. And I'm going to show that to you on the machine here as we go. So we are going to, let me get this. Okay, so somebody asked, can you change the satin stitch to another stitch? With the built-in um, embroidery, embroidery appliques that we have, you cannot change it. It is what it is. But within the software, with the super designs, the appliques that are in there, there's three different types of, of finishes that you can do on your applique. For the one, for the ice cream cone that I'm doing today, I just chose a satin stitch for the purpose of showing you the cleaned edge with the, um, with the satin stitch. But we're going to go through raw edge applique and all those other ones as well. So let me move this guy back over here. And we're going to stitch out this first one. So I'm going to do the bottom of the cone first. And I've got no, I've got fabric in here, my background fabric, but I don't have any of my applique fabric yet. So I'm going to hit the play button and I'm just going to stitch onto my background fabric. And it's going to stitch the placement stitch for where I'm going to put my fabric down. And then it's going to stop right there. But I want to show you something on the machine screen. You switch over here. You're going to see something pop up in just a second. Stop command in design. So yes, there, again, like I said, there's only one color, but there's a stop built into it. So we're going to hit OK. And this is where we're going to put our fabric down right on top of where that stitch out is. Then what we're going to do, we're going to hit play again, hit start again. And it's going to go all the way around where it had already stitched. And you notice it's gonna do a double stitch all the way around. And this is to really secure that fabric into place so that when it finishes with the satin stitch, it's got that clean edge on it. So I'm gonna hit my scissors one more time and another stop command popped up on my screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out. You can take this hoop out now. I know some people are afraid to do that. What you can also do is you can move your hoop position. So I'm going to put this back in and show you one thing. You can, let me show you on the screen so you can see. Down here at the bottom, I just got done telling Ryan and Amy that I wasn't going to show you anything at the bottom of the screen. And here I go. If you go to hoop position, you can go to trim position. And then what that's going to do is it's going to push my hoop out and y'all can't see that here, but my hoop has been pushed out towards me. I am not going to um, leave it there because I want y'all to be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to take this off and I, there's different types of applique scissors. I probably have one of every single type that there is. There are just ones like this, just plain applique scissors. There's straight ones too that don't have the curve on them. There's these little fine, fine point pointy ones. And then there's some also that have a curve on it. There are duckbill scissors also. It really just depends on what you're doing. I find that I use all of them. It just depends on if it's curvy or if I've got a straight edge or how big my applique is. But for something small like this, I'm just going to use my little, my little ones that I have, my little pointy ones I have here. So I'm going to let y'all watch me do this. And then I'm going to show you afterwards. We're going to cut super close without cutting our stitches, but we wanna get as close as we can and just go slow. And you wanna make sure that your scissors are sharp also. You will find that you get a better clean cut on those tight corners and sharp points 
if you've got clean, um, if you've got really sharp scissors. I'm trying to see if you can still see me. Let me move. Uh, let me just move this so that I'm going to move my arm to part position so I can move this up in here so y'all can see me a little bit better. So again, I'm just cutting real close to the edge, but I'm not cutting those stitches. You want to be careful not to cut your stitches, okay? Just like that. There we go. And there is our comb. And then what it's going to do now, I'm going to go back to my current stitch, and it's going to do that satin stitch all the way around. I'm actually going to cut a little bit closer over here. And another thing that I just keep in my, while this goes, I'm going to tell you. So real quick, what it's going to do is it's going to go back around the stitch that it just did. And then it's going to sort of do like a zigzag stitch or a lightning bolt stitch. And then it's going to come back through and do that satin stitch. So that's what that's doing there. While that goes, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about another little thing that I keep in my, my toolbox of of accessories and notions is I always keep a link roller because I know you can see all of these little pieces of fabric that were cut off the little bit of pieces, the little threads right there, get that lint roller out and all of that will go away. I feel like applique can look so messy until it's completely done and you get that lint roller on it and clean all that up. So that's, I keep one of the little mini travel ones in with all of my sewing supplies for this purpose right here. So we're gonna let this go all the way back up here. And you're gonna notice that it's not gonna go on the top part of the cone. And that's because the ice cream is gonna be on top of that next. And you don't need a satin stitch underneath where a satin stitch is gonna be. So are there any questions so far? This is my favorite type of applique is I like the clean finish that a satin stitch or a covered edge applique can give you. This is my favorite. This is what I like doing the most. Um, in the built-in designs, is there a way to modify this, the position of the satin stitch? Um, in, in what way? I, I don't, in the built-in designs, is there a way to modify the position of this? I don't believe, why would you want to is my question. Let me ask that. Can you modify the width of the satin stitch? Not in here. No, these are set built-in designs. They are what they are. Um, they cannot be modified. If you go to the applique creator, or I'm probably saying the wrong name for it, um, where you create your own appliques, there's different. There's a, a smaller satin stitch, a wider, and then there's a couple other motifs you can do as well if you're creating your own applique. And there's basic shapes and letters in there that you can use. So um, can you show how you moved? Yes, I will show that. Let me so on your screen, and this is the same for um, other machines as well. If you go to hoop position down here at the bottom, hoop position, and you're going to see current stitch position, park position, trim position, and center position. And you can do all of these things, take the hoop out. As long as you don't exit the embroidery, then you're good to go. And you just put your hoop back on and, and get going again. So. We're going to move on to the next step because I want to show you that one more time. We're probably not going to stitch out the whole satin part of it, but let me show you. So I'm going to switch to a pink now because we're going to do the ice cream cone. And it is not warm and sunny where I'm at today. It is stormy and rainy. I have a storm coming in and I wish it was warm and sunny like it was yesterday and could go get an ice cream cone. Let me cut that. Oh, doesn't like that with that on it. That. So what I'm going to do first is I'm not, I don't have any fabric down. I'm just going to hit the start button and it's going to do the outline for where my ice cream cone is going to be or my ice, ice cream scoop is going to be. So just like that. And then there's a built-in stop. Remember I mentioned with the designs that come in the MySonet software, there's built-in stops. So on the screen, this pops up stop command and design. And this is where I know I'm going to put my fabric down now. So we're going to put our fabric down right there. Make sure it covers where that stitch out was. And then we're going to hit start again. 
as it's doing this, for the small one, it's not as big of a deal, but if you have a bigger applique, you really want to make sure that your hands are down here, keeping everything smooth as it goes until it makes that full rotation around whatever the design is, so that you don't end up with any bubbles or ripples or anything like that. Um, if it doesn't, okay, I see what you're saying. If it doesn't cover the edge of the applique. So I have found that I like wider satin stitches. Some of these satin stitches are a little bit finer and, and tinier. And I'm trying to see if I can, if you'll be able to see this. So if you look at the top part of this, his tail, oh, you can't really tell. Let me see if I've got another good example over here. Um, I like wider satin stitches because here, this one, hopefully you'll be able to tell. You'll be able to see the black little fray pieces. Do you see that a little bit right here? Those black little specks. Because if the satin stitch was wider, you wouldn't have to get as close to the cut line. But sometimes it's a fine satin stitch. So play around with them. That's my biggest suggestion is to play around with what this the design is first um, and then go from there. So... But yes, that would be nice because that's one of my biggest things sometimes is that the satin stitch is not as wide as I would like it. So I'm going to move this to a part position really quick so I can get this arm out of the way so y'all can watch me. So I'm going to use a different pair of scissors this time so you can see. I'm going to use these applique scissors here. These are a little bit bigger. And again, but having those fine point, let me see, I'm trying to make sure I'm in the camera here. And just getting real close to that set or that um, running stitch is what you want to do all the way around. And I don't have any stabilizer on the back side of this fabric that I'm using here. For this type of applique, um, it's, it's really a personal preference. You can have it. You don't have to have it. Um, I do not. But when we do regular sewing applique, what I'm going to show you after all of the embroidery applique, um, I, we're going to have some stabilizer on the back. I'm going to use my fine ones now at this point because I'm doing these little curves here. I'm trying to see if y'all can see me. So just all the way around. I just want to get this out of the way because we're going to do our next embroidery. And if you don't get close on your first go around, you can always, let's see, there we go, come back and get, get those little thicker edges. But again, I'm going to have that lint roller to clean all this, all these little fray stitches up here in a minute. So just like that. There we go. Can you see how close I am to that? I'm trying to get it right there. There we go. You see how close I am to that running stitch, that placement tack down stitch right there. And then we're going to put this back on and we're going to go to, we're going to go back to current stitch position on our machine. Slide our hoop back on. And we're going to stitch that out. And I'm not probably going to go through this whole thing here, but I just wanted to go through the process of cutting that all out again so that you could see the step by step. Just like that. Let me let a little bit of that go so you can see, and then we'll, we'll go on to the next thing. Any questions on um, satin stitch covered edge applique so far before we move on to raw edge applique? Just a little bit more here. All right, we're going to cut there and then I'm going to show you this. So there we go. And we've got that clean finish edge and it's going to continue that all the way around my snow cone. And that is what you would call a satin covered edge applique right there. So next, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you raw edge applique. And this is where you get that frayed finished edge where you don't have to get as, you're not getting this close. What's the trick for getting the trimming just right, too close? And let's go too far. Yes. So again, my biggest tips are find applique designs that have a wide satin stitch, um, thin satin stitches. Um, you just got to get really, really close to that um, tack down stitch without cutting the tack down stitch. And you can always go back through once you get done and um, cut off the little frayed edges. 
But my biggest tip is having sharp applique scissors and fine tip scissors like these guys here. These little ones are probably some of my favorite for the little tight corners and curves, but you just really want to make sure they're sharp. Scissors do get dull and if you'll, you'll notice a difference that you won't be able to get as close and as tight of cuts. So that would be my biggest suggestion is a good pair of scissors. So next are going to be raw edge applique scissors. So if you notice, you can see the edge of my fabric right there, right? And then I've got a double one here. So this is raw edge applique. Um, we're going to do that next. So I've got another one on here. We're going to switch here. I'm going to come back up. Let me get this guy out of the way. But what I like about this one, this is a built-in design, this little flower that's right here. So let me show you. It's got all of the steps for this flower right here. And then two, one is where it gets to my ice cream cone. So there's just the two steps there. But I've got all of those steps here. So this first step that I'm going to do is going to be my placement stitch. So this is where, let me, somebody asked which presser foot. So for this, what I'm doing now, I just have the embroidery presser foot on because I'm. this is embroidery only right here. When we get to sewing applique, I will show you um, a couple other feet that you can use. But for embroidery, you want to use your embroidery foot. That's what I have on. So for this first one, or for this first stitch, all we're doing is that um, placement stitch is what I like to call it. What needle plate am I using? I believe I actually, that's a good question. I, let me let this finish and I'll confirm. When you're embroidering, you wanna have on your single hole um, stitch plate. It's, it's not life or death if you don't. You know, there's always more than one way to do things. I have on my um, open stitch plate, not my single hole one. You can see that there. But normally with embroidery, you could do the single hole and you would be fine with that. So I have my placement stitch here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put our fabric down and do our tack down stitch now. So I'm going to slide this back on. We're going to hit play. And again, I'm just making sure that my fabric is smooth all the way around. And for this one, it's doing like a, um, like a double triple stitch. I'm trying to get the this thread is bothering me. It's doing like a double triple stitch is what it's doing back and forth. I'll show you that up close here in just a minute. Right in one of the comments. Yes, so let me let this finish real quick. Because that's another good suggestion. I just don't do it as much with embroidery applique as I do with um, sewing applique. But let me see if I can zoom in so you can see what this is doing here, the stitch that it's doing. You can tell it's sort of going back and forth, back and forth. And again, just making sure that I'm smooth all the way around. And I learned a little tidbit too. If you really want a good, like fluffy raw edge applique, somebody suggested putting, um, what, is, what was it? I wrote it down. Is it flannel? I believe it was flannel. Where did I put it? Yes. So if you put, let me come back over to me. If you put flannel underneath the raw edge applique, it can give you more of like that fluffy look. So you want to find a color that matches what you're doing or just a white or whatever matches your background. So let me, I want to show you this up close. Oh, wrong one. Here we go. Still wrong one. So right there, and you can tell, I'm gonna cut all the way around this here in just a second. This is, yes. So this is actually built into the design. This is not a, when you do a raw edge applique, I'm gonna talk with y'all as I cut this. When you do a raw edge applique, you don't want to have a satin stitch because it would, you want that raw edge. So it's doing, I'm moving my hoop over. Um, 
So it's doing that stitch back and forth as it's tacked down. So when you do raw edge, it's really up to you. I like to get like an eighth of an inch close to my stitches. But if you want more of a frayed look, you would get a little bit further away. Um, it's completely up to you, but it's very forgiving. So if you've never done applique before, I would suggest doing a raw edge applique first because those edges are going to fray. They're supposed to fray. And that's, it's just more forgiving as a beginner who's doing applique. So I'm going to keep going all the way around here so y'all can see this. And I sometimes use the end of my scissors as my gauge for how wide. So I, I just find like a focal point that I'm looking at. And as I'm going around, I make sure that my scissors are lined up with those stitches in the same spot so that it's close to the same distance all the way around. Okay, so somebody else had suggested using stabilizer on the back of their appliques for machine applique. Um, I don't always do that because I don't necessarily like how stiff it can be. Um, it just really depends on what you're doing as well, um, whether or not what your end goal is with your applique and what you're sewing it onto would be my suggestion for that. But definitely try it if you are struggling with um, getting those satin stitches cleaned up good. So there we go. And then it's just all the way around and you can fluff it up a little bit, or if it's going on a quilt or something or on a t-shirt, it'll fray a little bit more in the laundry. And then that way that double stitch keeps it from completely coming undone. So this is what a raw edge, let me pull out my, oh, it's right here. This is a raw edge applique. So any questions on that so far? And I think I've answered all the questions. Amy, if I haven't, feel free to just send it back in there. So if you can, this is again a built-in stitch. And if you continue it, it's actually this flower right here. It's going to have all of these accent decorative stitches within it as well. So we would add in different colors and really make it pop. Um, but there's a few different raw edge ones that are double layered like that as well in there. So lots of different options for raw edge applique. So if there's not any questions on uh, covered edge, satin stitch, or raw edge applique, we are going to move to reverse applique. So reverse applique is what it sounds like. You're going to basically put your fabric on the other side, the reverse side versus the top side. So I'm going to pull up. I had already put together another um, set of designs. So let me go back and get rid of these guys real quick. And we're going to delete all. Yep. And we're going to come over here to our folder and scroll, scroll, scroll. And did I pass it? Must have. Oh, right here. So these are raw edge. I'm going to change my hoop here to the 200 by 200. They're going to fit right in there. And we're going to. Nope, that's not the one I wanted. Edit design. We're just going to make sure our design is in the center of our hoop, just in case. And then we're going to go to stitch out. So I've got two different types of raw edge applique. Did you starch your fabric? Yes. When I do my applique pieces, I do starch them. That gives it a little bit more stiffness and stability um, to help with those wrinkles staying away, for getting the clean edges. Um, I do I, My appliques, I do starch them as I'm cutting out the size of whatever it is. So, switch this back over here. Oh, that was a big thunder. I hope y'all didn't hear that. So, we are going to start with our um, raw edge applique, which is going to be like this one here. Let me show you. I got my little sample over here. It's going to be like this guy here. So, again, I've got that raw edge that's fraying, and that's what you want. And then my fabric is behind it. So, this is what we're going to start with here. It's the reverse. Um, Amy said you did hear that thunder. So if anybody's in Dallas, you know what I'm going through right now. Uh, we have a little bit of stormy weather coming in right now. So this first stitch is going to be our, um, our placement stitch for where we're going to put our fabric underneath the hoop. So I'm going to let this stitch out. And again, I just have um, a regular fabric right here, and then I've got tearaway stabilizer in my hoop. 
So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that one more time. Everybody, let me just give a little public service announcement here. People are always like, whenever I pull my hoop out to cut my fabric or whatever it is, my thread is still underneath. The thread, the bottom bobbin thread will not cut until the complete end of the design. So whenever I pull my hoop off of my embroidery arm, I always hit those scissors. Then it's going to cut that bobbin thread so that when I pull my hoop out, I didn't want to end up with that long tail. I know that's a question, a comment we always get about why does it not cut my bobbin thread? In the middle of the design, it doesn't necessarily cut it until the very end. So I always hit those scissors, make sure it's cut, and I'm not pulling out a long tail um, of bobbin thread. So just my little public service announcement reminder for people. So for this one, it did stop, but it's going to my next color. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my scrap piece of fabric underneath with my fabric right side up because we want to see through it. So I'm actually going to leave my hoop on. You can do this a couple different ways. You can take your hoop completely out. I'm trying to see how I can show you this. Take your hoop completely out and put your fabric on just like this. And I would suggest this for a beginner who's, who's never done this before. Put it right there. And of course, I don't have any tape on me, but we're going to make it work. Um, you could tape it down on all four sides, and then you know it's going to be in place. What I do is I risk it. <laughs> I will leave my hoop on, and I will eyeball it and feel underneath, and I will look. I sort of lift it up, look a little bit, move it around, and get it. And I always have a bigger piece than what I need also, so that if I don't get it exactly in the right spot, I'm still okay. So got my fabric piece under there and sometimes you can feel where it is too like I can feel where that fabric is and I know that it's covered so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit play hit start and it's gonna do a stitch around the edge again and what this is doing is it's securing that fabric that we placed behind it in place is this all making sense so far for Reverse applique. We're going to do one more little one over here. So you'll get to see the whole process again. And again, this is a built in stitch on the Fop Creative Icon 2. So it's going to go around twice to make sure that it securely catches it. And you're not going to have the fabric fraying out or anything like that underneath. Just like that. All right, and I'm gonna hit my scissors again. And this is where we are going to cut away this top fabric. So let me move my hoop position over. Um, so you can see, I have found that I have success. Let me show you the back side of this real quick. Oh, I did catch a little bit right there, but that's, that's all right. It's not gonna matter for what I'm doing because that's the corner piece. So that'll be all right, just like that. So on the back side, you can see that it has sewn all the way around my fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this black part. I don't find success using my scissors to get through this layer of fabric. I found that if I use my um, seam ripper, I can get under that a little bit more or I can pull it up and then cut a little hole. But you want to make sure you're not getting that fabric underneath. That's the whole point is we want to see that fabric underneath here in a minute. So I just cut just a little, a little slice, just like that. And then I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut all the way around. And I'm going to, again, you can cut as close or as far away because this is a raw edge one. So it doesn't matter. Let me see. Let's scoot this here. So you can get as close or as far away from that first placement stitch as you want because this is raw edge and it's not going to do that satin stitch over the top. We're gonna have that, that rough edge. So let me cut all the way around this. Just like that. Any questions so far? Y'all still hanging with me? Is all of this making sense still? All the way around. 
And you'll notice you don't see my pink fabric yet, do you? So we want to get rid of this stabilizer as well. This is the easy part. So again, I'm just going to hook it just a little bit and then I'm going to pull it back. And because I've got that running stitch already there, it's going to, it's basically just perforating away as I go around. It comes out real easy. Just like that. And these are some of my stitches from my first placement stitch. So we're going to cut those there. So there you go. And there is our reverse applique. So then what we're going to do, this does not say this in the instructions, but I have found success taking a, another piece. Let me get another piece of stabilizer for this next step. Let me find one that's big enough for this. Okay, so we're going to current stitch position. This, I like putting a piece of another piece of stabilizer. So there's nothing here right now. It's just my fabric. There's no stabilizer there anymore. So I have found success with putting another piece of stabilizer underneath and I sort of just feel where it's at and then I can look. I feel where it's at so that I've got some, cause it's gonna do some stitching in the middle of this and you're gonna still want that stable, the stability of stabilizer. So. This is going to go, and I see one comment here. Just a second, I'll get that. So it says, when I do reverse applique, I cut an X in the center of the outline, outlined area before stitching that early. Um, Yeah, if that works for you, then definitely go for that. Um, then you know ahead of time that you're not going to cut that fabric underneath that's a great suggestion as well i my just my personal preference and what i found that works for me is is using um a seam ripper but i love that suggestion thank you for sharing so this is what we're gonna try to find my this is what we get with a raw edge applique and it's going to do all of these this one as well is built into the machine. It goes with the circle one that it's doing. So it's gonna do this one color and then it's got some more stitching on the middle of it. Some more like abstract stitching like this one does. But we're gonna keep moving along here because we're already at about 20 minutes left and I've got two more things I wanna show you. So let's move on. Any questions with this before I move on? Let me show you the back side of that again. That that stabilizer Having that, stable, having that stabilizer on the back side was helpful there. So, and then that easily tears away as well. All I'm using is tear away for that. So let's put our hoop back on here and we're gonna do a reverse applique, but with a satin stitch. So let's go over here. Nope, not that one. That one, where's that? Oh, it was my first one, hold on. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stitch my outline first so that I know where to put my fabric at. So if you've never done applique before and it's something you've been wanting to try, definitely use what's available to you on your machine go to the instructions, the tips, uh, tips, techniques, tutorial section, and you can see all of the different types of applique that there are. Um, that's what I would suggest doing. And I love that it breaks down what designs can do that. So that I'm not sifting through all of the designs that are available because you know, there's so many and it's just narrowed it down to what is applicable to what technique I'm wanting to do. So again, my fabric is going to go right side up against my stabilizer underneath. I'm going to put that right there. And then we're going to hit start again, play, and it's going to do a stitch all the way around. So is this where you would have cut your X beforehand on your fabric, on the top fabric, so that it's easier to cut out? Is that what you would have done? I believe that's the step where that person suggested that. Let this finish here. Okay. 
because I want to I want to show you the difference in the finished look that you get. Okay, so again, we're gonna cut one more time. Move our thread out of the way. Pull this off, and I'm gonna take my seam ripper. Just cut a little bit right there. And with a um, covered edge or a satin stitch applique, reverse applique, we want to make sure that we are very close to the edge. So for this one, I'm trying to find my best way to do this so that y'all can see. Let me get this going and then I'll move my other hand out of the way. One second here. Okay. Y'all see that right there? Okay, hopefully. So we want to get really close to the edge of our stitching right there. And if you don't get close enough your first go around, you can definitely take those really sharp pointy scissors that you have and come back around and clean up any, see like that right there, I might get back in on that point there. And I would normally be looking at this backwards this way. Let me see if I can do it this way to where I can see where that stitch is and how close I'm getting. I'm sort of doing it backwards for camera. Um, oh, that's, yeah. Hey, there we go. Somebody said, and again, it's just those things sometimes we take for granted and we don't think about them. Somebody said, turn on your projector and you can see the place, the back. That's right. But it, yes, yes and no. I would still just double check that you've got it in the right place. Um, I like to have that placement stitch first, but you could definitely do your projector before you even do that first stitch, place your fabric behind it and then run that first stitch and the second stitch before you cut. Um, but always just be sure. I And a way, a fail safe I found that helps with that is making sure that my piece of fabric that I'm putting is, is significantly larger than what my finished is gonna be. So that even if I'm off by just a little bit, I can move it around and, and whatnot. So this is where I would come back in here snip down some of these little edges again right here. But yes, good point about using a projector. So just snipping all of these little guys here. And I'm probably okay, I'm just being overly cautious. Okay, then we're gonna take our stabilizer and tear that off. Again, I'm just using tear away. Oh, and I didn't cut away my other excess fabric over here. So we're going to cut that real quick. You see how big my, my square was for my circle. It came into my star over here. So let me cut away that fabric real quick. That's an easy fix. All right. So then we're going to put our hoop back on and we're going to do the satin stitch. And I'm not going to do all of this again for time purposes, but I'm just going to go through so you can see it just a little bit. For this one, it does a just a rough um, edge zigzag. You'll find that some applicates add in that extra um, base layer for your satin stitch. You can tell. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Focus. You see, it's doing. It's not doing my satin stitch yet. It's just doing a zigzag, and that's just a base layer for the satin stitch. It just depends on the design and who created it and what they like to do. But again, this is a really fine um, satin stitch. I like wider satin stitches because then you don't have to worry so much about your fabric showing. I wanted to do some of that satin real quick. Any questions or any other suggestions you've had that worked for you for doing raw edge applique? Or if you've tried it before. So again, it's just doing a base layer. It's doing another running stitch on either side of that zigzag. And here it goes. Okay, let me let it. Let it get a little bit of this going. Okay. 
This one's a little bit wider than some of the others, and I don't know if it's because it's a smaller design that it looks wider, but this one is a little bit wider than these that I did. These are the reverse covered edge applique. And these are built into the machine as well. This is just one flower, and I put three of them together. I wanted a little, a little tulip field going on there. And with this design here, let me switch over here so you can see, it's actually going to do some little hearts and stuff in the middle of it as well. Okay, so we're going to stop that there so y'all can see. And there you have it. There is that clean finished edge. Let me see, I'm trying to finish edge. I hope y'all can see that right there. So any questions on those four types of embroidery applique? And if there's another way, I would love to know, but those are the four ways that we have in the machine. And let me show you all this one more time where you can find this at in the closed book up here. Let me back out of embroidery edit here. Up here in the book, if you go to, let me go back little bit more. So embroidery, so you know where I'm going. It's going to clear all that out. I feel like it brings here. That's what I want. This is normally what you're going to see right here. And we're going to hit techniques and tutorials. And then if we scroll over to embroidery techniques, applique, and there's the four types. And again, like I showed on the first one, it's going to have step-by-step -step instructions and supplies for what you're going to need. And then if you go to content, Nope, that's not what I wanted. You go to content, that other little tab right there. Then it's going to give you all of your options for this is a covered edge applique. Or if I go back and I want to do the reverse applique with the covered edge and I go back over to content, there's all there's a little flower that I mentioned earlier. This dragonfly looks really fun. I think that actually has some cut work stitches in it as well. So different techniques you can do as well. But this is a great place to find different techniques and tutorials for quilting, for embroidery, step-by-step, -step, sewing, all kinds of different things. And all of it's going to be right in here for you. So next, what we're going to do, I see one, let me see. Uh, yes, I do as well. But for, so this person said to trim close to the edge, I pull up the fabric away from the stitch line and I can get, yes. For how I'm angled with it right here, normally I've got it in my lap and I'm like up close doing it this way, but for y'all to be able to see, I'm doing it backwards and away from myself. So, but yes, I pull that fabric up and get as close as I can to that stitch line. That's a great suggestion as well. If making a jacket with reverse applique and you don't want stiff stabilizer, what do you suggest? So you can use tearaway with denim. Um, it's not really stretchy. So you could use a tearaway and just pull it off once you're done and then it's gone and you don't have to worry about it. There's also um, also fusible um, no-show mesh that's thinner as well, and that's not as stiff as like a cutaway or, or things like that. So there's definitely other options. Just depends on the fabric that you're using and things like that. So let's switch back over here. So next what we're going to do, we're going to go to quilting techniques and applique right down here. We've got one more applique that we're going to do. And this is just free form applique, but this is a um, satin stitch as well. As you notice, it's going to pull up that same little instruction thing that I had mentioned before with embroidery. It's going to tell you everything that you need and the step-by-step -step prep. What I like about this one, some of our tutorials have little videos. If you see that little um, camera looking icon, you know it's a video. You can touch that and it's going to show you what it's doing in that step. I love this. I'm, I'm a visual person and this is super helpful to have this as an option as well. So I'm going to show you what it's doing here. A little bit of those steps as well so let me close that out and when you go to content so with embroidery it's got all of the embroidery stitches but when you go to content it's going to have the stitch that you should the stitch you should use so it's going to let me if I can get this out of the way it's got the stitch already pulled up i'm going to just close that right there and it is it's this stitch right there number 12 but it's not making you go and find that. It's going to have it right there. To open back up that tutorial you were looking at, if you hit the open book that's up here, there's that, um, nope, nope, there is all of those instructions. So you can close them out and be able to get back to them to see the next step that you're doing as well.
but that stitch is right there. There are different types of applique stitches as well if you wanted to do something else. So satin right there, there's all of these other fun satin ones there. And then as well as under quilting, I know some people like that um, uh, blanket stitch right there. You could do that as well. But for today, we're going to just stick with the normal satin stitch and you can make adjustments to it as well. So I'm going to close that out of the way for now. Any questions on that so far? So prepping for sewing applique, let me show you. I've got... Here are some of my finished ones. These are ones that I free formed in myself, a little diamond and a heart, and it's got that satin stitch finished on it. So what you're gonna need is a double-sided fusible stabilizer like this, and it's got paper on both sides, and one of them is sticky here. It's not really sticky, but you can tell that that's where the fusible stuff is. What you're gonna do, you're gonna figure out whatever size shape you're wanting to do. I'm gonna do a star for y'all today. I've already got it prepped and ready to go here. I'm going to take a piece of this stabilizer, the double-sided fusible, if I can find the edge, come on. Peel off that paper. Then I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to fuse that stabilizer to my fabric. It doesn't matter how big or anything like that. Then what I did was I drew my shape. So whether that's a heart or a diamond or a star, I drew my shape and then I cut it out. So this is fabric right here, yellow fabric with that stabilizer. And I haven't peeled this off yet, so this is not the fusible stuff. So once you've fused it on and you cut it into the shape that you want it, say this is my shape that I want, my little pocket piece right here. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna peel off this paper on the back. And the way that I found to do this easier isn't necessarily finding the corner and bending and pulling that back, but let me show you what I do is I take a straight pin and here's my piece right here. And all I do is I just sort of score it and make a little line. You see that little line I've got right there. And then I can just peel that back just like that. And this is a little bit sticky here. It's not super sticky, but you can tell. So then what I would do is I would take this piece that I have right here and I would fuse it to where I want it to be. So put it, put an iron to that and fuse it down. And that's what I've already done with this star right here. Does all of that make sense? Any questions on that? So it's a double sided fusible stabilizer and you peel off the one piece, you're, you're gonna easily be able to tell which one peels off. One side will not easily pull off and one of them will. So you'll pull it off and you've got this and you can see it's got, I don't know if you can tell, you can see that little bit of shine on there. That's the glue adhesive right there. So that's the side that you're going to put down on the back side of your fabric, just like that. Fuse that down, draw, trace whatever shape you want within that fusible area, cut it out. You get your piece like this, and then you peel off the next layer of that. Okay, any questions on that? So when you are doing freeform applique, there's a couple different feet. We have an applique foot, which is this little clear one right here. And Amy, I believe, has the part numbers for all of these in the comments up above. Thank you, Amy. There is an open toe. There's a clear and a metal open toe as well. But then your machine comes with this one as well that I think would work too. Um, it is the 1A or the A1 foot. This one comes with your machine. So today what we're going to use is we're going to use the clear applique foot. And the reason I like using that is because it's got a little guide in the middle. And I'll show you on my view here in a second that helps me be able to keep my fabric, the edge of my fabric in line with that guide. So... Let me show you. We are going to take off our embroidery foot here and we want to make sure that screw stays on. We're going to put on this applique foot, our little clear one here. Let's see if I can show you. Can y'all see there's kind of a little guide in the middle or that little opening that just makes it easy to put your fabric, line it up right in that way. 
And I also have on, you may have noticed when we were embroidering, I have my little magnifying lens set. When you are doing applique, this thing is a lifesaver. Look at how much closer you can see those edges when you're sewing around. So it's, I know y'all can't see what I'm seeing because of the angle of my camera, but these are great to have. If you do not have this magnifying lens set, it comes with three different levels of magnification. This is the highest and it just snaps right in to your machine right here. Um, I strongly suggest getting one of these. They're super helpful with those fine um, stitches and things like that that we're going to do. So I'm going to switch my thread here. And I picked a color that is a little bit different than the fabric so that you could see and it didn't blend in as much like my heart and my diamond I did. Thread that. And we're going to line it up right here. And I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks for when you're turning, when you get to these points to turn. Also, the other thing we want, we want stabilizer behind this. And I had a piece of stabilizer. Where did it go? Let's see. We'll use this one. You want to have stabilizer behind it because when you're doing that satin stitch, what your fabric will do if you don't have stabilizer is it'll start to tunnel up and it bunches up along the edge. And if you look on your machine, it actually tells you that when we do this satin stitch, you should use stabilizer. Another thing that you can do is you can edit this stitch. You can make it wider. So for those of us like me who like a wide satin stitch, you can make it wider. You can make it longer so it's not as fine and condensed. You can make it smaller. So it is. But I'm going to leave it at the length that it had that, but I'm going to make it a little bit wider. I'm going to just put it at five, though, right there. And I'm going to lower my needle down and get it lined up. And I'm using embroidery thread for this, for my applique here. So where I have this lined up, let me see if I can zoom in so you can see this just a little bit. So this edge is lined up with the center that's in right in here. So I'm gonna, that's gonna be my guide right there in the center. That's why I like this foot here. So here we go. And this is just gonna do a satin, or like a zigzag, close satin stitch. And I'm going to go all the way to the edge of my star. And you want to make sure your needle is in the down position. And you want your needle when you're turning your fabric counterclockwise, you want your needle on the right side. If it's on the left, you miss everything that was before that. So if we have it on the right, and I think I went a little too far here. We're still going to make it work. Get that turned around there. When you have it on that side, you can easily turn it and keep going. I'll show you when we get to this the next piece here. And if you do what I did and get bulky on your satin stitches there, it won't want to move. So if you notice, I grabbed back here and I just did a, a loose little tug and I got it going again. But that happens if you make your satin stitch really your length a lot smaller. That's why I left my length at what the machine suggested. If you make it a lot smaller, um, then it, it tends to be on top of itself and your stitches get really bulky and your fabric won't, won't move. So when I'm turning clockwise, I want to make sure my needle is on the left side. So I'm going to go one more time over here like that so that when I turn, I'm lined up right here. And this is where, if you've got your magnifying lens set, y'all, I wish you could see what was in front of me right here. It is super helpful, and it just makes everything so much more clear and easy to see. So that's that there. I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to show you this, because we have come to the end here. So there would be your satin stitch. This one right here. Oh, that's upside down. There's my little finished heart and my little diamond. So somebody said, please say the name of the foot. So the foot that I have on right now is the applique foot. And Amy has that part number listed in the, um, in the comments or the, the pinned post at the top. She's got the comments there. But if you visit your local FOF dealer and you tell them you're looking for that, that applique foot, they will, they'll be able to tell you. And then there is the open toe. There is a clear and a metal one of those as well you can use. And you can line up 
your middle seam right there with there's a little red line right there in the middle. You could do that. You do not want to have your IDF engaged um, or ID, IDT engaged when you are doing this because you just don't. I, it tells you not to have it engaged. So it will tell you that as well. So if there's not any other questions or anything like that, look at that. I am right on time at three o'clock. Perfect. Um, I hope that y'all enjoyed this. Amy's going to send me the next couple lives here in just a second. Um, actually, the next My Sonet one, I think, is the only one she's going to send me right now. But um, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, she said, do you know what they are? Um, yes. The next My Sonet live is next Wednesday. It is with who's doing the one next week. She would ask me this off the top of my head. Wendy is doing it. Shout out to Wendy. I hope she's watching me today. Um, Wendy's doing the one next Wednesday on my Sona, and that's going to be at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern quilting, Eastern quilting Designs is what she's doing. Thank you, Amy. Um, so please tune in for that one. That's going to be over on our my Sona Facebook page and my Sona YouTube channel, so you can catch it in both places. And if you do happen to miss it, um, you can come back and watch it. They are all recorded and easy to find afterwards. But I hope that I inspired you to want to try a new technique like applique, different types of applique that there are out there. Um, it's not a scary technique to do. It's one of my favorite things to do and give such a clean finished look, especially when you're doing embroidery um, to what you're doing. So it's, it's fun and I enjoy doing it and I hope that you do too. Yeah. So if there's not anything else, feel free to leave your comments, questions in the chat box and we will come back to those um, as we can. And thank you and we'll see you next time.